So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take five of the least expensive 250 gigabyte external SSD drives. I actually picked them up on Amazon and they're some of the cheapest. Let's just see if they're all made the same or how they fare against each other. Head to head, let's go. All right, welcome back to my channel. Definitely subscribe if you can. I have over almost 300 videos now, 300. So look at my backlog and check them out if you're new to my channel. What we're gonna do today is we actually have five different cheap, when I call cheap, under $40 SSD drives. So what can you get that's an external SSD drive for under 40 bucks? And I bought them from Amazon and some of them are no names, some of them have some kind of name brands. What are they gonna do? So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go ahead and just put them head to head. We're gonna run some tests. And I'm just gonna use Black Magic. I'm running a Mac behind me, as you can see, an iMac. And again, when you run different tests, if they're, if they're different tests with the different drives, they can all be different. I know that this may not be the best test, Black Magic test, but at least it's consistent, you know, for the very least. So we're gonna put them head to head with the Black Magic test just to see what that numbers tell us. And uh, what I have is I have five different drives here. I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, do the whole lineup for you and everything like that. And then I'm gonna give you a chart showing you the speed differences between all five. And uh, then let you make a decision on maybe which one you'd wanna buy. Um, so let's get into it. I mean, again, I have all the drives here. I'm gonna show them to you up close here and talk a little bit about them. And then we're gonna go ahead and put them head to head in black magic. Get some popcorn, pull up a chair, and definitely help my channel out if you can, if you like these kind of videos. I wanna do a lot more of them. Let's get into the review and let's see how fast these things are. Oh yeah, and really quickly, I have links in the video description to all these drives if you wanna go ahead and get some more information on them. All right, so drive number one. This is a new one if you've watched my channel before. This is the Kexin, K-E-X-I-N. It's tiny, um, you know, obviously you saw the pictures of it. You can see it up here. It's so tiny, I have some notes here because I can't, I don't have a photographic memory, so, so bear with me. I can't remember all this, but it's 2.5 by 1.1 times 0.4 inches, tiny. It's made out of uh, aluminum alloy, which is super nice. And it says that it gets read and writes up to 400 megabytes per second. We're gonna test that. Um, just the quality of it and the construction, it seems like you can run this over with your car and it's gonna you know, survive it. So not sure about that. Never heard this name before. It is a USB 3.2 Gen 2 connection on this one as well. It's about 0.92 ounces as well on it. So long story short, um, you know, this is the very first one we're gonna go ahead. Let's go ahead and run the test and then we're gonna start adding this to the chart. I'll have a link to this drive in the video description. All right, so now we have the Kexin. Let's go ahead and test this one and we'll add it to the chart. At the end of the video, we'll have the full chart. So let's go ahead and do this one first. You can see 411 and about 514. All right, number two. This is my favorite company, one of them. This is, these are the sleeper companies, Inland. Believe it or not, Inland. And this is gonna be 256 gigabytes. It's got a USB 3.1 Gen 1 on it. It's 1.54 by 3.94 by 0.34 inches, so it's really, really thin. You can see it up here, um, made out of uh, aluminum alloy as well. And what they rate this for is they say it gets up to 500 megabytes per second and then 450 in the writes. So we're gonna test that as well. So let's go ahead and test this one. This one's a beautiful drive. It's actually like very smooth, well-crafted, except for that huge Inland logo. Um, but this is one I recommend. I have some internal Inland drives. They work flawlessly, as good as Samsung. Great company. But let's check this out because I may be eating my words in a couple minutes. I'll have a link to this drive in the video description. All right, now we're gonna test the Inland Drive. I have Blackmagic here. It's already selected that target drive. Let's go ahead and test the Inland Drive. It's about 428.6 on the writes, 506.1 on the reads. All right, number three. I've done this one before, but this is the A data. This is the SD600Q. So SD600Q, it's a 240 gigabyte SSD. And uh, it's got some rubber around it and it's made out of, you know, kind of a heavier plastic. It says that it's military grade, uh, you, know, you know, security or something on this thing, or not security, but as far as like, you know, dropping it and stuff. But then it says you can drop it only from about two meter or about a meter and a half. So, I mean like, you know, five feet or something without a breaking. So I don't know what that means. It's, this one doesn't seem as strong as the other two aluminum ones. Long story short, this is USB 3.1. This is 3.15 by 3.15 by 0.6 inches as well and this is a 240 gigabyte so this is a data a bigger name now and uh, I've done this but let's go ahead and throw this in the mix see how this one fares wait for the chart I'll have a link to this drive in the video description 
All right, now we're gonna test the A Data SD600Q. I already have it set up. Let's go. Looks like it's about 366 on the right, 66.1, and the reads 423.8. All right, this is the A Data SC685. Now this is a little weird. This one is a great drive actually, except for it's extremely tinny and cheap. It's made out of like the cheapest plastic I've ever seen in my life. This thing would not survive a drop from anywhere, but it is a fairly fast drive. I think we're gonna test this. This is again, let me go ahead and look at the specs. It's 240 gigabytes. It's, it's rated at 560 on the rights and reads. Reads 560, 500 on the rights. But, um, well, I don't know if we can even get that, but long story short, this is gonna be a USB 3.2 Gen 2 as well, and it's about 1.23 ounces. I don't even know if it feels that much, but anyways, this is a thin drive as well, and uh, you know that 0.37 inches. So it's a, it's a, you know we're gonna test this one out. The weird thing about this one is I can't find this actual model. I don't know if they're discontinuing it now. I just bought it. I got it for under 40 bucks. It was like 37 bucks. I don't know if they're discontinuing it, but you can get the one terabyte. I'm gonna link to that in the video description so you can look at the one terabyte, and hopefully this one will come back soon. Maybe they're just out of stock or something. All right, now we're gonna test the A Data SC685. It's that white drive. I already have it set up, selected, let's go. It's about 467.8 on the writes, 511.1 on the reads. All right, and then the number four drive, this is gonna be the one I built, so we're gonna test it against a, one that you just build with your own enclosure. This is a Kingwin enclosure, and it's got this kind of rubber bumper. It kind of looks like the, uh, you know, the lacy or, you know, whatever you call those other ones that have the orange bumpers on them. Again, this is not the strongest case. This is a very cheap and expensive case. I bought this for, let me see if I can even find, I mean, the case, I think it was like 13 bucks, and the drive was like 20-something, so combined, this is going to be around 40 bucks as well. That's why I wanted to keep the cost the same. The drive in here is going to actually be the PNY CS900, and that's going to be 240 gigabytes SATA 3. It's rated at 200 or 535 on the rights. I'm sorry, 535 on the reads and about 500 on the rights. I don't think it's going to get that just because of this weird enclosure. But if for around the same cost, does it make more sense to get this? You know, the dimensions of this obviously are way bigger than the other ones. But, you know, obviously if something breaks in here or if you want to take the drive out, you have that you know, ability to do that. And so you have a little bit more flexibility with this one. But let's go ahead, let's do the tests and let's add them to the chart. This last drive had two different parts to it. It had the enclosure here and it has the drive and I'll have links to both of these in the video's description. So this is going to be a test of the external drive I created by combining, you know, my own enclosure with the PNY CS900 drive. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and test it right now. Looks like it's about 383.384.2 on the writes and about 390, 391 on the reads. All right, so what's the conclusion of all this? And this is gonna teach everyone kind of a lesson. There's never a perfect drive. So the very first one, the Kexen, it did really well. And that actually could be the runner up, but it's 411 and 514. It had the highest reads for sure. If you like reads, that's the drive for you. The Inland had not the highest of anything, but it was in between everything. It had like second and third place for everything. So that's gonna actually be our pick, and I'll tell you why. As we go down the list though, the A Data Drive, it had the slowest writes and it had you know average reads. The A data, the white one there, it actually won uh, really high on the rights and it actually was second place on the reads. But again, the availability of that drive right now is really tough to get, if at all. So we can't really recommend that because they're not really, you know, it's not readily available for some reason. And then finally, the one I built, you know, I used a really cheap enclosure and a cheap drive for about the 40 bucks. And you're going to get, you know, pretty good read and writes. But again, these are kind of lower, uh, you know, the lowest of all of them, basically. So that's not really a great drive, you know, compared to the other ones. But it does have the, all the you know, things that go with it. You, you can remove the drive, move it to a different enclosure if it breaks. There's a lot of things going for it where you don't need that speed. So at the end of the day, you don't need all the speed. And, and I would just say, pick the drive that's right for you. And, and, and if I had to pick one out of this list, I would pick the Inland Drive. You can see it there, just because it's a good mix of everything. And I know that that company's quality. I'm not getting endorsed by them. I just like those drives. All right, so what did you think? Pretty interesting data. Now this is just, again, five different drives. They're completely random. They're cheap. They're around $40, 250 gig drives. 
And I just wanted to pick them up and just see, you know, let's just see what the differences are. Let's see how they perform. So obviously you can see the charts that I just had put down. You can see the differences in them and there's no cost difference really. It just comes down to, you know, what you're actually using them for. And uh, you know, you have to do due diligence when you're buying stuff like this because things can be massively different in some cases. In other cases, they're exactly the same. So sometimes you're using the same drives in here and everything, so you just never know what you're gonna get. So watch some more videos like this and see which ones you wanna buy before pulling the trigger. I definitely have links in the description of my video so you can go ahead and check these out if you want to. I hope everyone likes these videos and I hope I want to keep making more of them so just definitely subscribe it's going to help the channel out if you can. Um, you know, I've been doing this for a while over 280 or 300 videos so help me out subscribe and we'll talk to you soon. Peace.